Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. got the most of it done. Jethro and me is going in there, square off the corner, and put in the framing. Well, let's hurry it up. I need a place where I can get off to myself. Well, Jethro's down in the hole now. Let's go see how he's doing. Awful dark down there. How's it going, Jethro? Hey, Uncle Jed! Hey, Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed, pull me up! OK, boy. It's going to be a dandy deep one, Granny. Ain't nothing gonna bother you down there. That suits me just fine. Of course, if a cyclone comes up, I'll let the rest of you join me in my cellar. Thank you. Just till it blows over. Then I want everybody out. Oh, good day. Granny! What you got smeared all over you? This here's oil. What? You done hit oil again. Well, I swung my pick. Pretty soon it was bubbling up and spurting all over the place. Well, there goes my root cellar. Uh, let's look on the bright side, Granny. I think we're in time to plug it up. <laughs> yes, Ru. Grab a shovel. Help me fill in this hole. Don't you want the oil? I need more oil like Custer needed more engines. <laughs> Hurry up. Let's go. <laughs> Morning. Can you think of any reason why Jed Clampett would be digging a large hole in his backyard? No. Not unless he's going to take his money out of your bank and bury it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chief. We do not joke about such things. Now find out why the Clampets are digging. Yes, sir. That's it. Big smile. Hold it. What's going on in my office? Oh, yes, that. Well, it seems some girl from the secretarial pool has been chosen to represent the bank in the contest for Queen of Beverly Hills. Oh. Gee, it seems to me that intellectual measurement should determine who will represent this bank. You've got something there. Of course, she's got something there, too. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Drysdale. Did we have a picture of you with your bank's representative? Well, seems only fitting and proper. Fine, we're right over here in front of the desk. Pardon me. Uh, Chief, I thought you agreed with me that intellect was more important than... Cheesecake. Oh, yes, we, we do want an intellectual look. You are a secretary, right? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> ah, that's, that's better. Uh, excuse me. And <laughs> yeah, now let's have a nice big smile. Hold it. Thank you, Mr. Drysdale. I'm sure your representative will win the race for Queen. Oh, I hope so. After all, that's what I'm paying you for. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Drysdale. Good morning. Where is my husband's secretary? 
She's in his office with him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Do you really take shorthand? Well, uh, not very fast. It's not too important. <laughs> She is a secretary. Word of honor, this is, uh, what is your name? Candy Davis. Candy, yes. Well, this is, um... My name is Margaret. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale. See that your employees dress properly. Yeah, see that our employees dress properly. Dress properly, employees. <laughs> There is another explanation that I'd like. Yes, dear. Those hillbilly friends of yours are defacing that beautiful estate next to us. They're burrowing about like so many gophers. <laughs> I want to know why. Well, I did ask somebody to look into that. You. <laughs> Chief, I forgot. She forgot. I'll look into it immediately. Really, Milburn, I've taken all I can from those clampets. Well, I haven't. That oil money still keeps rolling in. Money isn't that important. Who steals my purse steals trash. Shake hands with a dedicated trash collector. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, but Miss Commerce Bank forgot her banner. What is this beauty contest nonsense? Well, it's in connection with Beverly Hills' 50th birthday celebration, the semi-centennial. You see, Margaret, it is important. The spotlight of the world will be on our fair city. And what will the spotlight show? Four unkempt hillbillies digging holes in the ground. <laughs> Who's going to look at them with a hundred girls like this parading around? I told you to wait in my office. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I hope you're not going to overlook the intellectual approach to this contest. The girl who wins will reign as queen of Beverly Hills, and she wins a trip around the world. <laughs> well, Colin, that's it. Winning this beauty contest could solve everything. Oh, Margaret, Jane couldn't win with a rented figure. Oh, but Ellie Mae Clampett could win. And naturally, her family will want to go around the world with her. Mm, I don't like the idea. Oh, please, Milburn, just during the semi-centennial. No, Margaret, I don't like it. Very well. Mother will arrive tomorrow for a six months visit. I like it. <laughs> Can I strop down good enough? Yep. There's nothing that spoils good ground like that smelly old oil. It sure is hard to wash off. Let me look at you, boy. That oil give your lye soap a real fight, Granny. Yeah, that pesky, messy old stuff. Now I'm gonna look for another spot to dig my root cellar. Maybe this time we'll get lucky and come up with a dry hole. <laughs> look here, youngins. I don't want nothing said about us striking oil. Why not, Pal? Because somebody will just go to force some more money on us, and we got more than our share now. Pedro, come bring the shovel. OK, Granny. I reckon this tromp down good enough. Come on, let's go give me a hand. Yes, sir, Paul. Come on, Skipper. Well, don't just stand here with your fingers stuck in the ground. Do like Ellie said. <laughs> Claire, some days it just don't pay to get out of bed. <laughs> Gonna have a root cellar 60 foot deep Where I can sit alone and rock and never hear a peep And if Ellie brings her fingers in, I'll throw them out the door And have this road dig me down 60 feet more <laughs> I done struck oil again. It's a regular plague. <laughs> it's a black day, Jethro. Sure enough, it's for me. I need a root cellar in the worst way. I got some goat cheese that should have been put underground a year ago. If it gets any riper, it's going to run us out of the house. Granny, <laughs> look who's come to see us, Granny. Jethro, what have you been doing? Digging a hole in the ground. But every time Jethro, I start... Jethro, uh, we ain't talking about them holes, remember? Oh, I am. I was just trying to tell Miss Jane that every Go time... Go outside I... and wash up. 
Thank you. <laughs> Take the hold, Jethro. Get some. Don't talk, Jethro. Just keep talking. Don't talk. <laughs> Mr. Clavitt, we shouldn't have secrets from one another. Now, let's discuss those holes you're digging. Well, uh, we better head in, Mr. Drysdale. It'll probably get you all stirred up. But what? Is it about your money? Tell me. You see, you're stirred up already. <laughs> Let me ask Mr. Clavitt's help with my problem. Uh, perhaps that will solve yours. Could we step outside? Yeah, but uh, not too fur outside. Very well. <laughs> Why don't you stay and visit with Granny? Granny, let me tell you some of the advantages of the modern-day bank vault over, say, a hole in the ground. <laughs> I'm listening. Mr. Clabber, the city of Beverly Hills is about to choose a queen. You don't say. Yes. Number of beautiful girls have entered the race. How many you got running? Quite a few, but there's always room for one or two more. And another advantage is that our vault is nice and dry. In fact, air-conditioned. <laughs> things become moldy and damp when left underground too long. Now, I know that to happen. <laughs> But it would be a mite unhandy for me to have to go clean down to your bank every time I wanted something. No, but you won't have to. You just pick up the phone, tell me how much you want and when you want it, and it'll be here like that. You will? Yes, ma'am. Now, that'll be much handier than using your own backyard, won't it? Yeah. Especially after all the trouble we had trying to dig them holes out there. Now, here are some of the other advantages. And in addition to reigning over the city of Beverly Hills as queen, the winner will also get a trip around the world. Well, doggies. Yes. There'll be parties and dances. She'll be the center of attention, besieged by handsome, eligible men. You know, something like this is exactly what Ellie Mae needs to turn her into a lady. You are right. What a wonderful idea. Really, she got a chance of winning? Mr. Clappert. If Ellie Mae runs for queen, I can practically assure you that she will win the race. I hope I can get her to run. Jed, Mr. Drysdale has done talked me into not digging any more holes. I'm for keeping everything in the vault down to his bank. Whatever you say, Granny. Come on in and help me tow something. We'll be right back. You know what, Granny? The city of Beverly Hills is going to have a queen. No. And you know how they're going to pick the queen? How? They're going to have all the girls run a foot race. <laughs> no, I'll be switched. Congratulations, Chief. You did a great job. I was mildly magnificent. How did you do? Mission accomplished. Ellie Mae will enter the race for Queen, and the finals will be held beside the Clampett swimming pool. <laughs> Bye, George. That calls for a raise. <laughs> Chief, it's, it's all in the line of duty. Oh, no, it isn't. I deserve a raise, and I'm going to have it. <laughs> Drysdale, Granny tells me you're gonna keep all these little fur down in the vault in your bank. That ain't all, Jed. If ever I need anything, he's gonna fetch it out here himself. Well, that is surpassing kind. I wouldn't open that until you get it down to that air-conditioned vault. Now, Granny's got cheese in there. It'll walk down to the bank by itself and give it a chance. <laughs> Look up, Chief. Half a victory is better than none. Well, you hear who's gonna run in the race for Queen of Beverly Hills? I heard. And I think Ellie Mae will win. Don't be too sure. Who could possibly beat her? Well, Granny's gonna try. What? Uh, oh, Granny, you haven't got a chance. We'll see about that. My legs is ever a bit as good as Ellie Mae's. Well, don't just stand there. Pick up your basket and let's get back to the vault. <laughs> They come off thinking I ain't got a chance to be queen. Now, cool down, Granny. I reckon they just never seen how fast you can run. <laughs> Granny, you and Ellie ready to run? Dead, dead. I'll start you as quick as I get this pistol loaded. Okay. Now, Ellie, I want you to run your best again, me. It'll be good practice for us. Well, how can we have to practice, Granny? You know we can beat these city women. Yeah, but this is gonna be a wingdinger of a race betwixt you and me, and I ain't done no top speed running lately. <laughs> Granny, you don't have to beat me to be Queen of Beverly Hills. I don't care shucks about it. No, Ellie, your pa wants you in the race, and I gotta beat you fair and square. On your mark, 
Now do your best to give me. Get set. <laughs> <laughs> Who won, Jed? Well, when you pass me, appears like Ellie was out in front of you a little. That don't mean nothing. She's out in front of me, standing still. <laughs> Maybe you better sit down for a spell. <laughs> you sure you want to race against all them young girls? You're darn tootin'. I'd do anything to be queen of Beverly Hills. How come you're so anxious? Cause when I'm queen, folks will have to do what I tell them to. And I got a lot of changes in mind for this town. <laughs> Sorry I beat you, Granny. You only beat me because we was running on level city pavement. I'm a stump jumper and a hedge hopper. <laughs> Dad, you and Jethro wrestle me up something to jump over. I'll show this young'un how to run. Granny, you might could get hurt. Like I said, Granny, I don't care nothing about being queen. You don't have to race me. Now, you listen to me, both of you. If I'm going to sit on the throne of Beverly Hills, these legs is going to take me there. Now, you get ready to run. And don't hold back. <laughs> on your mark. Get set. Jed. I'm afraid the young and edge you again. You ready to sit down and rest now? No, I'm just commencing to get member down. <laughs> <laughs> Great news, Mr. Drysdale. What is it? Come in, Candy. We have just come from the first press party, and I went around and spoke to every judge personally. This young lady was the unanimous favorite, a sure winner. Kitty. <laughs> Took a lot of your money, Mr. Drysdale, but whining and dining those fellas sure paid off. Tomorrow, this girl will be the Queen of Beverly Hills. Mr. Chief, if you had used the intellectual approach, as I urged, we would not be in this mess. What do you mean, we? This is your problem, remember? <laughs> if you'll excuse us, we'd like to go downstairs. I got a great idea for a picture. Yes, he's going to photograph me inside the vault. <laughs> no, let, let them go. This might eliminate her right there. <laughs> oh, no, Granny! You gotta slow down the rest of spell. Where do you get off like that giving orders to the next queen of Beverly Hills? <laughs> no, queen, you've been running for two hours straight. And as soon as Ellie Mae gets her wind, I'm gonna race her to Pasadena and back. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Granny, I'm to talk to you immediately about running for queen. You in the race, are you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm hardly with my best in a bathing suit. Bathing suit? Why would you wear one of them things? Well, all the contestants have to wear bathing suits. Not me. But it's one of the rules. Then I'm taking myself out of the race. I don't blame you, Granny. Why, if I was to show up in one of them skimpy bathing suits, it might start the men folks to fighting over me. <laughs> and I hear tell that these city men are bold to begin with. And one of them rascals might run up and grab me and hug me and kiss me and choke me off and marry me. And I just put myself back in the race. <laughs> So, you see, Miss Davis, being a beauty queen isn't all fun. It's lots of hard work, too. Oh, I won't mind that. I'll just keep thinking about that wonderful trip around the world. Wonderful? <laughs> Have you ever had those shots they give you? <laughs> it's a nightmare. Why, your arms will ache for weeks, and you'll break out in these large black and blue bumps, and sometimes break out in a rash. <laughs> well, other people have gone through it. I guess I can. Now, wait, you haven't heard the worst part of it. Mr. Drysdale, I'm representing your bank. Don't you want me to win? Uh, well, of course I do, but I feel responsible. I feel duty-bound to show you both sides of the picture. You might want to drop out. Now, don't you worry about that. Nothing can discourage me. I'm going to win that contest for you. 
Thanks a million. <laughs> well, Chief, mission accomplished. Ellie Mae will be the sole entry from the Clapper family. How did you do? No good. Cheer up. Ellie has a good chance of beating her. Oh, Miss Hathaway, Mr. Drysdale, can we be getting back to town? I have a date tonight with the head judge. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a decision. Uh, the finalists are uh, the representative of the Commerce Bank, Miss Candy Davis, and our unsponsored contestant, Miss Ellie Mae Clampett. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Um, Milburn Drysdale, the president of the Commerce Bank, has an announcement to make. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. <clears throat> due, <clears throat> due to circumstances beyond her control, Miss Candy Davis has been forced to withdraw from the contest. Oh. However, ladies and gentlemen, she will receive a trip around the world at the expense of the bank. <laughs> and a substitute will appear in her place. Uh, our two uh, finalists will please come forward. Miss Clappett first. <laughs> and uh, now the new entry representing the Commerce Bank. <laughs> Commerce Bank feels that intellectual measurements are more important than physical ones, and we have every confidence that you'll agree with us. Are you kidding? <laughs> Each contestant will now step to the microphone and tell us in her own words how she intends to represent the city of Beverly Hills as queen on her world tour. Miss Jane Hathaway. Ladies and gentlemen, if I am so fortunate as to win you may rest assured that I will carry the message of our cultural and intellectual achievements to our sister cities from... from Pone to Pone. <laughs> and now we will hear from the, uh, from the winner. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, uh, Miss Clapper. Well, first off, I'm gonna take my critters. Especially my skunk along with me. Because critters, especially skunks, don't get much of a chance to travel. <laughs> I'm gonna take my pa and granny and Jethro and our hound dog old Duke with me. <laughs> I'll be mighty proud to represent the city of Beverly Hills. But just betwixt you and me, I'd heap brother Miss Jane here would win. <laughs> One moment, please. Hi, doggies. Ellie made a right good speech, didn't she? First rate. Done herself proud. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I have your attention, please? Quiet, please. After due deliberation, <laughs> our judges have come to a uh, unanimous decision. The young lady who will represent the city of Beverly Hills as queen is none other than our distinguished judge, Miss Karen Crandall. I'm so grateful to Bob. I mean Mr. Cummings. I mean the head judge. <laughs> Well, 
Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.